you for joining us from all over the world as we all get together to learn bridge together. And I don't know about you, but defense is my weakest suit. Um, so I'm looking forward to learning from Kurt this morning. Uh, he's been really kind um, in terms of doing this free lesson for us this morning. So uh, we're in for a treat. And uh, I know he's going to start off new lessons in January, more on that um, as we go along. If you've got any questions at all, guys, uh, hello at learnbridgeonline.com um, is where you can send in your questions. You can sign in for the newsletter, more on that in a short while. But why don't we um, welcome and get Kurt onto the stage, uh, who's going to teach us a little bit, bit about defense and, and bust some of our myths. Welcome, Kurt. So good to see you. How are you? You too. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, glad uh, that uh, we're joined by people from all over the place. That's uh, that's fantastic. So, Kurt, everyone's talking about it being cold. Uh, I know you're in Denver. How's the weather there? You know, it is not too shabby. It is uh, eh, maybe a little chilly, but you know, the sun is always shining here for the most part. So, even when it's cold, it doesn't really feel that cold. It warms you up. That's great. Hey, Catherine. It's a, until the sun goes down at 4.30 this time of year, or, you know, uh, uh, then, then, it, then it feels cold. That is, that is very true. So, Kurt, I believe you're going to talk to us about defense and, and bust some myths and facts and fiction. So I'll leave you to it. I'm right here. Um, everyone who's joining us live or on replay, feel free to ask questions here or on the question page. Uh, Kurt loves that little interaction and uh, would be happy to uh, to answer your questions. So Kurt, I'll leave you. I'm right here. Uh, holler if you need a hand. All right. That sounds good to me. Let's, uh, let's uh, get off and running here with our, uh, with our slides. And this is, uh, th this is, I, I think, going to be hopefully uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, we have uh, just uh, a few concepts today, uh, all revolving around defense. And uh, just, uh, I, I think, a, a few introductory comments uh, about uh, defense. And I see already a few people in the YouTube channel who have most definitely uh, attended classes with me uh, on defense and are probably well aware that it's uh, it's actually one of my favorite topics to teach. But I would suspect that you know, if there are any bridge teachers out there uh, who teach defense more often than I do, I haven't met them yet. It's a, it's a topic that I think a lot of instructors tend to stay away from because it is the hardest part of the game. It's hard to defend. Uh, it's maybe hard to teach defense to some degree, and maybe that's why people shy away from it. If you uh, are inclined to purchase bridge books and you have a, a library, uh, you have probably noticed that there aren't as many titles on defense. Look, bidding is fun. It's sexy. Playing the hands is fun. Defense is a grind. Uh, it takes a lot of work. But I think what inspired me to do a lot of teaching of defense, I mean, I feel like there's a need there. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be doing more of that in the year to come uh, with uh, LearnBridge Online. Uh, and just for myself, as I've just returned from the uh, <laughs> the, the Phoenix uh, uh, Fall National Championships, where uh, I did not distinguish myself, uh, and, unless uh, distinction is uh, <laughs> is in a dubious manner, I didn't play very well. <laughs> but uh, uh, but as I was really learning the ropes of the game and working on my game and trying to get better. At some point, I made a conscious decision to focus on defense. And that is where I really started to see improvement in my results. So I guess that is the inspiration, if you will. So we hear a lot of sayings, right? So many different mantras uh, about bridge. And many of these are, are good advice, right? Uh, whatever it is, you know, whether it's, you know, second hand, low, third hand, high, or, you know, eight ever, nine, never, or whatever it is. We've, we've got a ton of these things, right? 
And most of that advice is good most of the time. Of course, one of the problems with bridge, there's, there are exceptions to every rule, right? That's part of what makes it so difficult. But certainly there are sayings that we hear that are accurate a lot more often than not. Uh, and it's good to follow those most of the time. And then we'll worry later about when there's an exception, when we need to do something different. But along with that, I think some of the things that we all hear are perhaps not great advice. So that's kind of what we want to do today. So I picked out just a few concepts and real simple. We're going to throw a statement out there. We are going to determine, hey, is this fact or is this fiction? And then we'll give you a hand. We'll go over to the table uh, for each of these and illustrate why that's the case. Uh, so uh, why don't we go ahead and get on to the first one here, which is one that you've probably heard. Under leading an ace against a suit contract. In other words, leading any card in a suit headed by the ace that is not the ace, leading a spot card or leading a, a lower honor. This is fact. On rare occasion, the double dummy thing to do might be to underlead your ace. Maybe you catch partner with the king, in particular, maybe something like King Doubleton, right? And you lead small away from your ace, and you find partner with the king, and partner leads back to your ace, and you give your partner a rough. So could it be the right thing to do? It could be, rarely. And that's not really a position that we want to cater to, because it's so unlikely. So generally, we should avoid it because underleading an ace is far more likely to cost a trick uh, than it is to gain anything for us. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, seeing a question coming in here from Karen, later in the hand, later in the hand, there might be some more safety because maybe your partner has been able to signal, right? Uh, and that would be a little different. At least you've had a chance to gather some more information later in the hand. But you know, one of the things that is so tough about defense is that opening lead is blind, right? All you have to work with is the auction you've heard and the cards you see in your own hand. So yeah, we are talking specifically here about the opening lead. So I think what I want to do is, uh, why don't we uh, jump on over to the table uh, to this first hand here uh, and uh, certainly if anybody uh, has uh, questions, comments about uh, uh, the bidding, we can throw those in. But I, I have uh, intentionally here uh, tried to, uh, I want to keep these auctions pretty simple uh, so that uh, since our focus is going to be uh, the defensive aspect of all of this. And what we're going to have here is just a simple, uh, opening of a major suit and invitation to game in that suit. Uh, we see here that South has a limit raise in spades, four card support, and we'll have North go ahead and accept this game. And that is going to put East on opening lead here. All right. Uh, now, as you look at that East hand and uh, not envious of East opening lead problem, this is not a particularly pleasant hand to lead from. You don't have a lot of information to go on for starters, right? All the opponents did was bid the Trump suit. And any lead you make could conceivably uh, be a little bit dangerous. So let's say 
just for argument's sake, again, I, uh, we can, and we can go back to what maybe would be the best lead, but let's say you get a wild hair to underlead your ace of clubs. All right. Well, how is this going to play out? Well, Declare's going to win that king. And you have some work to do on this hand. It's a good game to be in, but you do need a little something to go right. And the layout is not particularly friendly for North declaring this hand. And so we do want to draw Trump, but keep in mind also that something's got to happen with these diamonds. We're going to end up with some diamond losers. Uh, some folks uh, maybe here that uh, did the recent to draw or not to draw. Uh, and uh, we talked about this, uh, you know, how to uh, deal with getting rid of some of our losers. So I'm going to cross over to the dummy here because I want to find out if, before I start drawing Trump, I want to find out how many diamond losers I, I'm going to have. So I'm going to see if my diamond finesse will work. And unfortunately for North, it does not. And so I still have two diamond losers there along with my ace, which is a winner, of course, uh, to uh, that that need to be roughed. And that's why I didn't go about drawing Trump right away. Uh, if Trumps are 2-2, two, two, this won't be a problem. But we also have to think about the fact that the Trumps might not split for us. All right, let's say South now exits with a Trump. That's a, a safe thing to do at this point. And now we go about dealing with our roughs here. And what I've essentially done is I'm I'm willing because I see a chance to make this game. Uh, and because I need to rough the diamonds, I've uh, and that jack is is suspicious. I, I might get over roughed. Uh, but what I'm going to do is come back to my hand here so that I can rough the last diamond. And I don't mind if somebody over roughs with the king. Now we see that East is going to follow here with that last diamond. And I'll rough with the 10. And I'm not over roughed. So now I'll go ahead and run my queen, maybe. West, I think West probably would have over rough with the king if he had it. Now I have to lose the king. And I'm going to go ahead and claim uh, we have a heart winner, a spade winner, and we do have that slow heart loser. So I'm going to claim uh, two of the remaining three tricks, and I've brought home my four spades. Should I have made this game? No, absolutely not. What was what would have been the setting trick for the defense? That club trick, right? And by the way, as we're going here, folks, feel free, you know, fire off those those comments, those suggestions, uh, those ideas uh, uh, through through the chat. Uh, and uh, yes, I agree. The opening lead was poor. Um, you would have gotten away with leading the ace. Now, another saying that we hear is avoid leading the ace from space, right? The ace with no king behind it, right? Ace and just spot cards. But we see that this was a costly proposition. So if you've decided on a hand like this, that you're going to lead a club, lead the ace. I don't like that lead. Normally when I see an ace empty holding like that, my first thought is, no, look toward another suit. So club would actually be my last choice of leads with the East hand. You know what I mean? A heart could be right. A diamond could be right. Uh, notice here that a diamond would also be costly because that would give away the defense's diamond trick. So I think I would tend to go a little more passive with this type of hand. And my opening lead, I think the safest opening lead here is a trump. 
you can afford to lead away from the king once. Now, when you get in, you're not going to want to lead another spade because now you expose your king to being dropped by the ace if you lead a second spade, right? But that would be my choice. And I think this is a good situation for a passive type of lead. And we're going to come back to this topic of passive leads, I think, when we get to our third hand. Uh, because one of the things that I talk about a lot of times with defense uh, is this notion of a passive approach to the defense versus an attacking approach. We're actually going to see both, both an attacking and a passive lead. So, yeah, uh, I don't know what your lead would be, but yeah, my choice on that one, I think a Trump, go passive and uh, and wait patiently for your tricks. You'll get a club, a diamond, a spade, and a slow heart. You'll get one trick in each suit. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go on to the next point here. And this one is going to look perhaps a little similar because we're going to talk about leading away from a king. And I don't know if you have heard this, but I have had many players over the years ask me, hey, I heard you should never lead away from a king against a suit contract. Well, this is fiction. Now, we need to be judicious about when we lead away from a king, or for that matter, a queen. You know, a, a higher honor that is not the ace. Of course, we don't want to underlead the ace, as we've talked about. But underleading a king, should you ever do that? It depends. And this is the harder part deciding when you want to lead away from a king and when you should avoid that. If you lead from a king or even from a, a queen, and, and when we say leading from it, we normally refer to making a length lead, right? Whatever your normal length agreement is with your partner. If you lead fourth best from length, if you lead third and fifth against suits, that's a very common treatment as well. Uh, and so the question is, when should you do it? When should you not? Well, leading away from an honor is an attacking type of lead. And if you have decided that this auction I've just heard or something from the look of my hand calls for an attacking lead, then you shouldn't hesitate to lead away from a king. Yeah, a comment that came through uh, about um, you know, having spot cards or having something to go with that king. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you might have King Jack. We're actually going to see that coming up uh, uh, shortly uh, on this next hand. Uh, spot cards. Yeah, I mean, if you have some fillers in there with that king that you're leading from, that, that can definitely be helpful. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things you worry about, uh, as I see Karen's comment, um, you know, uh, uh, you you might be, and this would apply more toward leading from, uh, say, a queen or a jack, this idea of a frozen suit. Some of you may have seen the video we did on YouTube uh, about a frozen suit, uh, a suit that you, uh, uh, that both sides are trying to avoid leading. So, um, so yeah, if we've, decided that we want to attack, then this is the situation to lead away from a king. So why don't we go ahead and uh, return to the table and uh, let's deal out uh, board number two here. And examine a situation that would perhaps verify for us that it can be okay and in fact best to lead away from a king. Uh, I know we've got folks all over the globe uh, using different bidding systems. Just to let folks know, uh, I am using uh, on this hand and also on the next board, uh, a two over one game forcing approach. So all of the bidding here is just going to be completely natural, but this initial response by Wes, this two club bid, is game forcing. So it says, hey, we have the values to be in game, uh, and 
we are going to game somewhere. And then it's a matter of determining what strain or is it going to be, uh, you know, whether it's going to be a suit, whether it's going to be no Trump. Again, keeping it pretty simple here on the auction, uh, East Two Hearts confirming a six card heart suit. And now West can raise hearts. And East has no interest in a slam with this hand. So East will just go on the game. And if East is suggesting a minimum, then there's no reason for West to go on either. And we have reached our major suit game contract. Uh, to grab a question that came through here, by the way, before we start off with our uh, defense uh, about uh, attacking and passive. Yeah, we're just giving you a little bit of a preview. Uh, I have taught four-week courses where I've spent maybe close to half the course talking about those concepts. <laughs> so uh, there is a lot to consider. And we'll talk about this particular hand, why we want to attack. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would definitely encourage folks, uh, especially as we, uh, uh continue in, uh, 2023, uh, uh, hopefully with, uh, uh, doing a lot of, uh, defensive content, uh, here on, uh, LBO. Um, uh, I, I would uh, certainly love to have folks participating in those classes because that is exactly the type of thing that we want to dig into deeper, uh, really get into, these concepts of attacking defense and passive defense, and how do we decide which we should choose? So that is a question that is not uh, quickly answered. So on this hand, okay, so they're playing in hearts. Uh, what would be a passive lead and what would be a uh, an attacking lead by South? So a Trump would be a passive lead. Uh, something like a club, Notice that South doesn't have any honors in the club suit. Now, West did bid that suit. Uh, and we don't know, you know, you know sometimes that first response, uh, especially in a two over one sequence, it doesn't have to be a long suit. It doesn't have to be a good suit. For all we know, that two club bid uh, was a poor four card suit rather than a good five or even six card suit. We won't know for sure until we see the dummy. Uh, but if you are... Choosing a club or a heart, one of the suits that the opponents bid, that would be a more passive lead. An attacking lead would be a spade or a diamond from the south hand. If you're leading a spade, you would, of course, lead the ace, right? Now, that may not seem like a real attractive lead, but based on point number one that we talked about, we're not going to underlead that ace, right? That would be bad. So if we've decided that a spade is called for, we would lead the ace. Uh, if we're leading a diamond, then we want to make whatever our normal length lead would be. So if you play fourth best, you would lead the two. If you play third and fifth leads against suits, um, then that's just if you if your suit is five cards in length, you would lead the fifth card. Uh, if uh, your suit is four cards in length, you lead the third card. So if we play third and fifth, we would lead the four. That's purely partnership agreement. I often play third and fifth leads against suits and fourth best against no Trump. Uh, that's pretty common. But again, purely partnership agreement. One is not necessarily superior to the other. So I'll ask all of you, what do you want to lead with this hand? And yes, I understand you're seeing all four hands. So there's a little bit of bias there. Do you want to attack? Do you want to go passive? Karen is ready to attack. All right, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got some attackers here with the diamond suit. Uh, we have somebody suggesting a club, which would be a more passive lead. So, this is a time to attack. And I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Uh, one, the opponents have had what I would term a fairly vigorous auction. They have confidently bid a game. 
they set up the game force right away, right? From the first round of bidding, they decided we are going to game somewhere, okay? When you get confident, vigorous bidding, especially if the opponents look like they're sniffing for a slam, this is a situation that calls for an attack. Because if you don't attack, any tricks that you have coming may go away. And in a situation where you want to attack, even if it appears that you have given away a trick, like let's say you lead away from your king of diamonds and east or west wins the queen because partner didn't have anything in the suit. It might look to you like, oh no, I gave away a trick. I shouldn't have led away from my king but it may have cost nothing at all because if you didn't at least try to attack those diamond losers that your opponents have may be going away anyhow often they are so let's go ahead and attack here and see what that looks like i'll go ahead and lead fourth best and now we see as the dummy comes down ooh west did have a pretty good club suit and let's go back to talking about that club suit as being part of the reason that I chose to attack. So what we're really hoping for is to find partner with anything in the diamond suit. It doesn't have to be the ace, although rather conveniently partner has the ace this time. But even the queen is fine, right? If partner has so much as the queen and declare has the ace of diamonds, it's going to force out the ace and perhaps set up the king and jack as winners for us. And this is actually why I chose to attack with the diamond rather than with the spade, because that ace of spades may be the entry to my hand to be able to cash the diamonds. So since the ace looks like a sure entry outside, that's why if I'm attacking, why I like the diamond away from the king better than laying down the ace. If I play the ace of spades at trick one, I've used up my entry right away. And now partner is going to be a good partner and return our suit. And you see here that Declare has a problem because if he puts up the queen, it gets covered by the king and that promotes the jack. Uh, so probably no reason to cover. I'll just go ahead and play small and hope for the best. Uh, although this is not going to work out very well as far as yeast is concerned. Uh, and by the way, do we know in the South that we're going to be able to cash this king, that East has the queen? Yes. Why do I say that? Because if partner also had the queen of diamonds, I would hope after winning the ace of diamonds that partner would show us the queen at trick two. And because partner returned the nine, that would indicate that the queen is in East hand. And then we figure out on defense that East started with queen third and that all three of our diamonds cash. And now the last order of business, let's be sure to lay down that ace now because it's the setting trick, right? We don't want declare spades going away. So we don't want to crawl into a passive shell after taking our three diamonds and not set the contract. And then that's going to be it. Finally, Declare gets in. And as long as Trump's don't split 5-0, Declare has the rest of the tricks. So we'll go ahead and let East claim this one. But too little too late, we beat it a trick. So what happens on this deal if we don't lead a diamond? What happens if we go passive and lead a club or lead a trump? Can you see how this develops? Declare would win an opening club lead or an opening trump lead, draw the remaining trumps, and play five rounds of clubs. And what happens? All three diamonds go away from the East hand on the run of the club suit, which once trumps are drawn, it's safe to run those clubs, right? And 
all that is lost is a spade. We actually go all the way from down one in four hearts to plus 480 for east-west, two over tricks. Now, we didn't know for sure that the club suit was going to be a source of tricks uh, for pitches for east, a place to pitch losers, but we had those concerns, and I said I would go back to that topic. This is why I didn't want to lead a club. Because South is looking at nothing special in the club suit, right? And when I'm looking at only three clubs to the 10, I'm very worried that East-West have good clubs and that this is going to be a source of tricks for them. Even if we lead a diamond and it blows a trick or it looks like it blows a trick, it probably didn't blow a trick because those diamonds were going to go away on the club suit anyhow, right? You know, what, what if Declare had the ace of diamonds? Now, if Declare had the ace of diamonds, East West may want to be thinking about a heart slam on a hand like this. That would that would give East a, uh, a, a better hand and uh, maybe they would uh, be doing more bidding and not just stopping at the game level. But this is the idea, right? When is an attack called for? When we're worried that tricks go away. Now, if you chose the ace of spades, can you still beat this hand? You can, right? But you better shift to a diamond right away. So it doesn't have to be a diamond lead at trick one, but if you lead the ace of spades, then it's got to be a diamond switch at trick two, which could happen. And that's why you want to be sure that you and your partner are clear with your signaling, right? Like if I chose to lead the ace of spades, I would hope that North would give me a negative attitude signal, whatever your signaling method is. I would hope that North would discourage play a spade under the ace that says, no partner, I don't like this suit because you only have the jack. If you had the king of spades, you would probably encourage a spade. But if South led the ace at trick one and partner said, no, I don't like those, looking at those good clubs in dummy, the only thing that would make sense at that point would be a diamond switch, right? So you could get away with defending the hand that way. So all of these things kind of come together. All right. Well, we have one more for you. And has anyone ever heard the saying, when in doubt, lead Trump? This one really grates on me, really chaps me. <laughs> it is awful advice. Don't lead Trump because you are in doubt. Don't lead Trump because you don't know what to lead. Yeah, you're going to pick up some hands where you don't know what to lead, but take your best shot, gather, process the information what little information you have from the opponent's auction and choose your lead based on what you know, right or wrong. Don't throw your hands up in the air and say, I don't know what to lead. I'm leading a Trump. Lead Trump with purpose. Lead Trump because you believe it is the best lead on this hand. There are a couple of reasons why a Trump can be the best lead. And I've mentioned what I think are really the big two. Sometimes we want to cut down roughing power, right? Uh, we have the feeling from the bidding that maybe dummy's going to show up with a singleton somewhere and that declare may need to rough losers in the dummy. And so we want to cut down roughing power. That is a good reason to lead Trump. But another good reason, uh, reason to lead Trump is it is often a safe lead. 
And if you think back to the first hand we looked at, the one for the uh, example of don't underlead the ace, and I said my chosen lead with that hand would be a trump. One of the reasons I liked that was I had honors in all these other suits and I didn't want to lead away from them. Uh, and so I decided to go with a safer lead. And it looked to me like spades were trump on that hand. It looked to me like leading a trump was least likely to give anything away. And that is a passive approach to defense. The idea behind a passive line of defense is declare, I am not going to help you. You do all the work yourself. And sometimes when the opponents are playing in a suit contract, a trump is a good passive lead. Sometimes you lead a trump and you pick up an honor in the trump suit that's in your partner's hand, right? Like you lead a trump, your partner shows up with the king and declare covers it with the ace or same thing with the queen, right? And it may look to you like, oh, I gave away a trick. I took a finesse for them. But most likely, Declare was going to take that finesse herself anyhow, right? So you probably didn't actually cost your side a trick by doing that. So that's not to say, it won't. on occasion, it could. But yeah, going, uh, uh, going with a Trump can be a great passive option. So why don't we go back to the table because I do have one more hand for you here. Uh, and we'll take a look at board three. And this is a hand where we'll have a decision to make once again about the opening lead. And uh, the auction is going to look similar. We're going to use a two over one sequence, actually starting off the same way that our last board bid. Although this time the rebid is different. Uh, and normally, uh, you know, when we're playing a, a two over one type of structure, we're just bidding out our pattern. We're trying to figure out where we belong. And so here South is going to rebid diamonds. So South is indicating a five card heart suit and at least four diamonds. Could have a fifth diamond, but uh, looks like South has an unbalanced hand because we're not hearing a no Trump rebid. Uh, and now, uh, very common in our two over one structure, uh, North first had to set up a, a game force, is now going to support the major and confirm the heart fit. So this indicates uh, an eight card fit. Uh, and... Uh, with a minimum opener, this I think would be a good situation for South to go ahead and take kind of a fast arrival approach and say, okay, partner, glad we found that heart fit. I have a bare minimum opening. I'm not interested in slam. You're going to need quite a bit extra to be thinking about a slam and North doesn't really have much extra. And so we are content to play four hearts. All right, so I'll put you on opening lead. Well, what is everybody inclined to lead? Feel free to provide some suggestions here. Not that I want to bias anybody, but that, that 10 of spades, I mean, that looks like a pretty normal lead, right? Little honor sequence there, 10, 9, 8. I mean, didn't we hear in Bridge 101 if uh, if you have a sequence that that's usually your best lead? Am I leading the witness? We got to vote for a club. Yeah, that's uh, uh, you know, I mean, I suppose a club is a possibility. All right, we've got votes for all four suits. I, I would say that the one that I would eliminate most quickly would probably be the diamond. I don't really want to lead ace from ace queen. That that could be a costly lead. And of course, we wouldn't want to underlead the ace of diamonds. I think it's pretty easy to eliminate the diamond. Beyond the diamond suit, I think we could at least make a case for any of the others. 
Uh, so uh, a couple uh, a couple people have suggested the nine of clubs. So this isn't one of our points for today because, well, I only could really pick out three for the time frame. But we'll throw in another little nugget for you about leading doubletons against suit contracts. Don't do it. If your partner has not bid the suit, doubleton leads against suit contracts are usually some of the worst leads you can make, whether it's especially honor doubleton, ace doubleton or queen doubleton or jack doubleton. Stay away from that lead. If you never lead a doubleton against a suit contract the rest of your life, your bridge game will be better for it. Now, of course, like we said, always an exception. Are there occasions where I where I lead a doubleton against a suit contract? I have done it maybe once or twice a year. By the way, if you play on BBO, the robots do it all the time. And it nauseates me. It's a bad idea. If partner bid the suit, different story, okay? Totally different story if partner bids a suit. Then leading a doubleton is much more attractive. Because you know partner has something in the suit. Um, yeah, uh, why, why is it a bad idea? Um, uh, it, because it it tends to cost tricks. Yeah, like if, if you if you lead Jack Doubleton, for example, uh, sometimes it allows you, it, it identifies the queen in the other hand, and if you're uh, if declare say has the ten, then they can take a mark finesse for the queen. And if your your side may always be entitled to a trick in that suit, and then you give it away, uh, or heaven forbid, if you lead something like King Doubleton, and declare has the ace say, and the queen is in dummy, then you've given away a trick that you were entitled to. So, all right. Well, here's my choice, and I'll tell you why. I'm leading a trump. And this is where you don't want to go on autopilot with your defense and simply lead the 10 of spades just because you were dealt a sequence that is a comfortable, convenient lead. I want to lead a trump because I believe I need to cut down roughing power. And let's go back to the bidding. South opened a heart, but what was South's second suit? It was diamonds, right? So if you're West and you're looking at ace, queen, 10, nine of diamonds, what do you know? You know that the diamonds lie unfavorably for declare, right? Who is likely to have the king and the jack? South is, right? Now, sure, it's not impossible that North would have one of the diamond honors and that South rebid kind of a lousy suit, but certainly the auction indicates that South is the favorite to hold the missing diamond honors which means that if South tries to play diamonds, hoping for ace or queen or something to be onside with east, it's not going to work, right? Because you are sitting over declare with those diamonds. And you know that as West. You know that the diamond situation is unfavorable for South. If the diamond situation, if South is not going to be able to take diamonds naturally, because you can prevent that, what is South going to do as a counter? Try to rough diamonds in the dummy. And the expectation is probably that the North hand is short in diamonds on this bidding, right? South has four or five diamonds. We're looking at five diamonds in the West. That doesn't leave many diamonds for partner or for the dummy, right? So dummy might, might have a singleton. Here we see that dummy has a small doubleton. So we want to cut down roughing value. So what does Declare do here? Well, I'm going to put up the nine. Notice that North South do have all the high hearts. So I have the option to uh, win this Trump lead in either hand. I'm going to go ahead and put up the nine because I want to be on the board and I want to lead toward my diamond holding. Remember, South is not in on the bad news yet and doesn't know that West has all the diamond on. So I'll start with my six of diamonds. Okay, well, I'll try the jack. Okay, doesn't work. 
lost to the queen. I was hoping it would force the ace, making my king a winner, and then that's one fewer rough that I need to worry about, right? And what are you going to do as West? Stay down the same path, right? Stick to your guns. A Trump was, looks to be a good lead. Stick with that plan. Now, once again, I'm going to win the queen because I want to be on the dummy. And I'm going to play another diamond. Now, of course, what I'm hoping at this point is East hops up with the ace because maybe he's worried that the ace is going to get roughed out, right? No, no ace. Well, if East isn't playing the ace, I surmise that East doesn't have the ace and I don't think I want to put in my king. So I'm just going to stick in the eight and hope for the best. Well, that didn't work out very well either, did it? And now the worst news. I was really hoping that I could still get a diamond rough in, that I could uh, you know, rough one of my diamonds. Maybe the ace will rough out. I'm hoping that West doesn't have that remaining trump, but <sighs> well, all roughing ability has been denied. I'm stuck with a couple diamond losers in my hand, right? I mean, now we see that four hearts is pretty much hopeless. So there's really not much left for me to do now. I'm going to play a little diamond and hope that the ace pops up. But nope. I mean, I'm I'm really, I'm grasping at straws now. This, this hand is not going well. Uh, and in fact, now West is actually safe to uh, go ahead and uh, cash the diamond. Uh, and I'm not even out of the woods yet. Because now just to get out for down one, I need the queen of spades to drop doubleton. And that's not happening either. Now, I will tell you, there is a line. I'm going to go down two on this hand. Uh, there is a line to get out for down one, but that essentially involves playing for down one from the go. And that would be kind of a cowardly thing to do. I'm at least going to try to, I'm going to try to make the hand, right? So uh, why did I play the diamonds? Uh, uh, someone asked, well, it didn't matter whether I played them or not. I had, I was stuck. I was going to have to play them at some point, right? I mean, I had no choice. I'm stuck with, uh, at that stage, uh, king, uh, it was the king and the deuce of diamonds. Where was I putting those diamonds? Right? I mean, they're not going anywhere. Th this is why West was drawing Trump on the hand. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have to play them right then, but the defense was entitled to those diamond tricks regardless. And you can see on this hand, there's just really not much else to do. I mean, I, I would have been thinking cross rough, right? If I didn't get Trump leads, uh, what I would probably try to do is rough diamonds in the dummy and then get back to my hand to continue roughing diamonds by roughing clubs in my hand. Um, and as you can see here, you know, dummy, I mean, you might, you might like, well, should we go after dummies clubs on this hand? Should that be our approach to the play? But the clubs aren't good enough. Uh, dummy only has ace jack. And of course we see here that the clubs split very poorly too. Um, so there's no real chance of setting up clubs with East holding king, queen, 10, fifth over the dummy. So it's a pretty hopeless proposition. Now, Take a look at this hand here and try to envision what happens if West does not lead Trump. And I think you may get a second chance, right? You may still beat the hand if you get going on the Trump the first time you get in, even if you don't do it on the opening lead. But yes, Mythbuster, thank you, Babs. I actually have done full lectures with an assortment uh, uh, of these things. Uh, uh, that I that I called Mythbusters. I did it once uh, uh, in person at the uh, Denver Regional Tournament uh, as my uh, annual uh, guest lecture. I did a I did a Mythbusters thing 
Um, you know, next thing you know, we're going to have infomercials uh, on cable uh, promoting my uh, my MythBuster series. Um, so imagine if Trumps aren't led. Let's say West leads the Ten of Spades. I'll win the spade in the dummy and play a diamond. It'll lose. But let's say in the process, let's say East encourages spades. Reasonable. West is looking at the queen of spades. All right. Let's say West continues with a second spade. I win again in dummy. I play another diamond. Now, if they try to shift to Trump, it's too late because that leaves me two hearts remaining in the dummy and I get to rough both of my heart losers. By the way, I'll be roughing high with the nine and the queen and notice that East will be out of diamonds but unable to over rough because East hearts are only the eight and the three, which would not be good enough to over rough the queen or the nine. If I get two diamond roughs in the dummy, do I make four hearts on this hand? Absolutely. Because I will have lost only two diamonds and one spade. That's 10 tricks. So don't be afraid to lead Trump if you think the bidding calls for it. And the indications on this hand are, again, perhaps expected shortness in the dummy, in diamonds, and knowledge that the diamonds are unfavorable for declare. If my diamonds in the West hand were not ace, queen, 10, nine, uh, let's say my points were instead in clubs, like I had the king or queen of clubs, uh, or maybe both. And I had eh, only small diamonds, three or four small diamonds, or maybe queen third or something like that. But I didn't have all of the stuff in diamonds. Would I lead a trump? No, I would not. I would lead the spade. Why? Because I would know that either declare has good diamonds or any missing diamond honors that might be in my partner's hand are in a favorable position for Declare. And I know that if I lead Trump and Declare starts working on diamonds, that he's going to find the situation much more friendly than was the case on this hand. So I would choose a different lead if my diamonds weren't so stout. I would probably lead the 10 of spades in that case. The Trump lead wouldn't be as attractive. It might still be on the radar, but here, because of my diamond holding, I think that a Trump lead is screamed for, if you will. So <clears throat> I see uh, uh, some folks that have uh, uh, jumped in here uh, on, on the chat, uh, uh, maybe just joining us late. Uh, my understanding is uh, this recording will be uh, available for at least a little while. Uh, I don't uh, know, know how long, uh, but yeah, if, uh, if you didn't get here at the beginning, uh, you will uh, definitely uh, still have the chance to uh, view uh, view the recording uh, of what we've looked at today. Uh, so um, I guess uh, why don't we jump back here uh, to uh, our last slide and just kind of uh, wind everything down um, for uh, for today. And uh, I just want to say that uh, I am really thrilled that all of you joined us. I'm uh, I'm so excited to get to interact with folks all over the globe. Uh, I was thinking that, uh, uh, you know, don't, don't they have a, 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 I feel like I used to see a long, a long time ago, these things that you could get for home, like sort of a, a, a world map uh, that would have, uh, that would also be like sort of a clock where you could see what time it was. Um, I'm thinking maybe I need something like that for my office. So all these, uh, so I can, see not uh, here not only where everybody's joining from but what time it is uh you know maybe have folks uh getting up and uh staying up uh, until the the wee hours or getting up very early to join us not but you though, right <laughs> no not but you i'm sure he's going to join us one of these days thank you so much kurt that was great uh, as someone as someone gave you the wonderful name, uh, Kurt the Bridge Mythbuster, love that. 
So we learned three things, looking forward to learning more about active and passive leads, uh, when to lead trumps, when not to. Um, so we'll be joining your lessons in January for sure. And uh, I know Mala's here too. Mala's got a free live stream coming up as well. So she's got a couple of free lessons and new lessons starting off in the new year. So folks, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, hope you've had a fun time. Uh, certainly Kurt and I have. Kurt, thank you so much again. And we'll see all of you um, very, very shortly. Take care. Bye for now.